Kyron Richard Horman. On June 4th, 2010, Kyron was taken to school by his stepmother, who then stayed with him while he attended a science fair at the school. The stepmother stated that she left the school around 8 a.m. and that she last remembered seeing Kyron walking down the hall to his first class. However, he was never seen in his first class and was instead marked absent that day. At 3.30 p.m., the stepmother and Kyron's father walked their daughter to the bus stop to meet Kyron. The bus driver told them that the boy had not boarded the bus after school and to call the school to ask his whereabouts. The stepmother called only to be informed by the school secretary that, as far as anyone there knew, Kyron had not been at school since early that day and that he had been marked absent. Realizing then that the boy was missing, the secretary called 911. The search efforts for Chiron were extensive and primarily focused on a two mile radius around Chiron School and on Slavi Island, approximately six miles. On June 12, 2010, around 300 trained rescuers were on the ground searching wooded areas near Chiron's elementary. The search for Chiron spanned over 10 days with no results. The stepmother's statements to the police indicate that after leaving the school at 8.45 a.m., she ran errands at two different grocery stores until about 10 a.m. Between then and 11.30 a.m., the stepmother stated that she was driving her daughter around town in an attempt to use the motion of the vehicle to soothe the toddler's earache. The stepmother said that she then went to the local gym and worked out until about 12.40 p.m. By 1.21 p.m., she arrived home and posted photos of Chiron at the science fair on social media. In the midst of the investigation into Chiron's disappearance, Chiron's biological mother was reportedly told by investigators that the stepmother had offered their landscaper a lot of money to kill him. The landscaper testified in a deposition that the stepmother approached him to help kill her husband in January 2010, five months before Chiron's disappearance. But when the stepmother's attorney asked the landscaper if she had asked him to kill her husband, he said no. Investigators convinced the landscaper to confront the stepmother while wearing a wire, but they were unable to obtain any evidence and could not make an arrest. In June of 2010, Kyron's father filed for divorce and obtained a restraining order against the stepmother. The divorce was granted. During this time, the stepmother failed two separate polygraph examinations regarding Kyron's disappearance. In July of 2010, a grand jury subpoenaed several friends of the stepmother, including one friend whom the mother and father described as having been in close communication with the stepmom and providing her with support and advice that was not in the best interest of our son. According to law enforcement, the friend was extremely cooperative and allowed a search of her property and car, as well as enduring three hours worth of questioning from detectives. On the day of Kyron's disappearance, the friend abruptly left her work gardening for a homeowner at the residence in Northwest Portland around 11.30 a.m. and returned around 90 minutes later. She also allegedly helped the stepmother purchase an untraceable cell phone. During this time, the friend told journalists, there's this horror that my friend is going through. If I thought for a second that she was capable of foul play, I would not have been there. She would not have been my friend in the first place. During this time, the friend failed two separate polygraph examinations regarding Kyron's disappearance. In August of 2010, it was announced that law enforcement were searching for an individual allegedly seen by two witnesses sitting inside the stepmother's truck outside of Kyron's school on the day of his disappearance. Bruce McCain, a former sheriff for the county sheriff's office, told CBS News the identity of the second person if he or she existed, could be critical in determining what happened to Kyron after 9 a.m. on June 4th. In early August of 2010, both the biological mother and father were subpoenaed and testified to the grand jury, as well as the school principal of Skyline Elementary. In December of 2010, it was reported that the grand jury had yet to provide compelling evidence yielding a potential indictment. By November 29, 2010, 
Search efforts in Kyron's case had cost an estimated $1.4 million, according to the county commissioners, and yield 4,257 tips. In early October 2012, the stepmother's friend refused to answer 142 questions during a deposition regarding the stepmother's lawsuit. Among these questions were ones regarding her whereabouts on June 4, 2010, and her contact with the stepmother that day. She also declined to identify a photo of Kyron and whether she had met him before or not, and whether she knew his father. Kyron was last seen wearing a black t-shirt with the letter CSI in green and a handprint graphic on it, black cargo pants, white socks, and black Skechers sneakers with orange trim. He wears metal framed glasses. Kyron has been missing since June 4, 2010 from Portland, Oregon. He's described as a white male with brown hair blue eyes. He was 3 foot 8 and 50 pounds at the time of his disappearance. His birth date is September 9, 2002. If you have any information concerning this case, please contact the local tip line or your local FBI office. That is it for this episode. Thanks for watching.